Hi everyone, my name is George Hoffman and I'm a co-founder here at Network Immunology Inc. And I'm here to share with you today why I'm still so passionate about this network theory and our technology um, and all the science behind our technology. The reason I'm so passionate about this is because in immunology there is still no predominantly and commonly accepted widespread accepted theory or framework for the immune system. There's a lot of facts, there's an immense amount of data, mountains of details from experimental results, but no comprehensive framework that brings it all together and shows how all this data, all these details, all these facts fit together. And that is exactly what we have. Our platform behind our technology is the network framework or the network theory of the immune system, also known as immune network theory. And the, the central premise behind that theory is that the antibodies, the defenders of the system, the things that defend us from viruses and bacteria and other pathogens, they're not just recognizing things that are foreign, but they're also recognizing each other as part of this network, this immune network. And that fundamental fact that the antibodies are recognizing each other is a fact that's massively overlooked in the whole field of immunology in the industries of big pharma and biotech um, because people are mostly focused on the details um, of the system, the minutia. They've really given up trying to understand the bigger picture. And there's a story why that is, and I'll share, love to share that with you. Um, and that's really, but anyway, that's really the main foundation of, of, of the passion behind this. And because, I've, because it's such overlooked science, um, and what we're doing is pioneering the understanding of immunology. And we're not just leading with the paradigm and the, the theory, immune network theory, but we're also leading with technology that's, that's coming out of the theory and based on the theory. The story began back, uh, the story of immune network theory began back in um, around 1972 um, when Niels Yerna first realized, hey, wait a minute, just as the brain is this network of neurons with memory, a cybernetic network that can learn from experience as a network, the immune system also, you know, it's a network of cells, even though it's spatially throughout the body, the immune system also learns from experience as a network, as a cybernetic network of cells and antibodies. And this network has memory. And just as the brain, the neural network, has a sense of self. This immune network also has a sense of self and the ability to, dis to distinguish between what is self and what is foreign or what is other. So this network understanding was emerging in the early 70s with Niels Yerna in 72 and then in 74 he made his first publication on this immune network theory which is just emerging at that point based on these antibody-antibody interactions or variable-region variable interactions of the antibodies and there was a growing interest in this immune network theory back in the mid-70s all the way up to the late 70s, early 80s up until the point where in 1984 Niels Yerna was actually awarded a Nobel Prize mostly for his work on immune network theory and funnily enough only about a year after he won the prize, so there's pretty widespread recognition of the validity of this network theory of the immune system. In 1985, the year after he won the prize, he, um, there is a group down at Caltech that was mapping out the genome of the immune system. And they were sequencing, sequencing the genes of some fundamental parts of the immune system to where they expected a, a, a really important protein in the immune network framework um, was supposed to be. This gene, or, sorry, this protein was called IJ. IJ was what we could call a keystone of the system um, and a really fundamental part of how the whole immune network fit together. So they're sequencing these genes of the immune system to the point where they expected to find the gene for IJ and when they got there, there was no gene. There was no gene to express this really important keystone protein called IJ in the system. So they said, well, that's funny. And this was a really 
critical juncture in the history of immunology because from this point on they said you know what if there's no IJ gene then the protein of IJ must not exist if there's no gene to express this protein there must not be a protein called IJ so that's a really important part of the network framework and then because there is no gene to express the IJ protein a lot of other things kind of dominoed down didn't fit together in the network framework so they said you know what let's go over here and focus on the details of the system um, and that's when they kind of gave up looking at this bigger picture understanding of the system so that's what they did they left the network theory and they, th they left all the data associated on a, and thousands of experiments um, demonstrating these network inter interactions of the system they left all of that and went to focus on the details of the system they threw out the baby with the bathwater in essence in the sense that they they threw out the whole theory with the paradox Jeff Hoffman, my father, our chief scientist at Network Immunology, um, said, wait a minute, as scientists, we shouldn't shy away from this central paradox of the system. Let's try to seek to understand it and see how it works. Um, so he worked on this for the next years, and it took him about six years until he was able to resolve this paradox um, in the context of a theory that he developed um, that could explain how you could have this missing gene and yet still have a protein that was selected at the proteomic level um, of the system. And so he actually published the solution to the IJ paradox in 1991. But by then the whole field had moved away from the network theory, the network framework. And their reaction was, what? Network theory? That's old science. That's literally 80s. And so Jeff said, okay, I'm fine. He just kept on working at his lab up at UBC with a few other um, immunologists. And he kept on building on the theory with extensive experimental testing and mathematical modeling and developed the theory, developed the theory even more until in, it was 19, sorry, it was 2008 when he made a breakthrough with his um, co worker, Ernest Leung. Uh, where they discovered a new phenomenon, which led to another breakthrough in 2010 in the theory. And then it's been, um, even just in the last two years, from 2014 to present 2016, where there's been a lot of data being generated from experiments at University of Toronto, demonstrating that we can work with this whole network framework to work with the system in subtle ways but important ways that benefit the organism and that working with the whole network framework we can actually for example bring an overreactive immune system back down to a stable steady state not through using immunosuppressant drugs which give side effects but through wor working with and using uh, an entirely new um, method of immunotherapy which calms down the system back to a state of a stable steady state of homeostasis um, a state of health for the organism. We've been working in mice so far and it's been working in multiple experiments um, and so it's a very exciting stage. Uh, we're able to formulate um, protocols, experimental protocols and predict outcomes of experiments that have been coming, becoming successful, becoming true in, a, in fact. Uh, you know, we make a prediction about how an experiment's going to go, and it goes that way based on the theory, the theory's prediction, really. And so we're really at just the very beginning of all of this, but the potential is so huge to be able to make a real difference for human health um, around the planet. Um, we do have six patents now, so we do own a lot of this technology, and there's probably going to be a lot more to come. But we have our hands full in terms of intellectual property. We got intellectual property coming out of our ears at the moment. We are most focused on right now finding investors to be able to further develop this technology with us. So I welcome whomever is watching to be a part of this and a part of pioneering immunology. And, and not just pioneering immunology, but also pioneering new technologies based on this leading edge understanding of the immune system. Thank you.